Is it time to buy crate axles for your Jeep? Well, in this video, we're gonna cover some of the most popular choices out there in the market today. Hey everybody, it's Bud with Axles 4x4 and we build badass 4x4s. Well, for a lot of people, when it's time to beef up, whether they're putting bigger tires or more horsepower into, into their Jeep, they also need to upgrade the rest of their drivetrain, which is the axles. As you know, the stock axles that come with the Jeeps, they're great up to a 37, maybe even a 39 inch tire, but for those guys that like to run 40s, or they're putting a lot of power down to like their 37s or whatever, they need to beef up the ring and pinion and the actual shaft size. So that's where crate axles come in. And in this video, we're gonna go over a few different of the most popular choices out there that seem to be the most readily available now, this isn't going to cover every axle assembly out there that's on the market. There are some uh, 60 80 combos, some semi float combos, stuff like that. But what I'm going to cover today is probably what we consider to be the most popular ones. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been filming at different times because different installs, but it kind of gives you a good idea of what we see the most of here at the shop. While there's some other axle choices out there, these are going to be the ones that we see the most here and what we can recommend to you. All right, let's talk about one of the most popular axle choices we have to offer our customers, and that's the Spicer UD60 crate axles, available for both the Jeep JK Wrangler, the JL, and the JT Gladiator. What makes these axles so appealing to the consumer is that, one, the price point. They're probably one of the cheapest options that you can get out there and the most bang for your buck. I don't know what everybody's selling them for, and I dare not say it in this video because right now, Prices are always fluctuating, so it's hard to say, but they're typically run a little bit less than their competitors. But they're a great value because they're super available. We can almost always get these things within about a week or two at the most, unless they're just completely out of stock everywhere. But Spicer does a really good job of keeping these axles in stock at various warehouse distributors all across the nation. So it's really easy typically to get our hands on them. They do not come with any steering linkages, but what's really handy about them is whether it's a JK, a JL, or a JT, it doesn't matter. They all take a standard Jeep JK tie rod, whether it's an OEM tie rod or an aftermarket, but I don't know why you would put an OEM on there, but just about every aftermarket tie rod out there for the Jeep JK will bolt right up to this, and that's super convenient. Same thing with the drag link. Now for the JLs and JTs, those drag links will also work for these, but the tie rod is specific to the JK. We always sell these with the Eaton knee locker. You can get them with an ARB air locker, but I'm a fan of the E lockers, and that's what we sell the most of. But whether you go with an E locker or an ARB air locker set up in the Spicer UD60, price point's going to be the same. And last but not least is the brake size on these things, or all the axle sets that are available as crate axles. That the Spicer UD60 has a large brake. It's a very, very good brake. It works very well, and it's why we will usually lean in that direction when a customer wants to do a Hemi conversion and we they, they need larger axles, we'll usually go with the Spicer axles because of the brakes themselves. Because when you build up a Jeep that's running that much horsepower and torque and also the weight of the vehicle once it's built, you need a set of large brakes to stop that thing. The front axle and the rear axle, they, they're great. They have some good uh, profile to the differential to help you when you're rock crawling. So it's not like a standard Super Duty 60 that would have a, a very large profile for the, the differential section, but it does have a little bit of notch to it on both sides to help you maneuver through the rocks. The rear has your basic Dana 60 profile to it, nothing very special about it, but again, large brakes in the rear, large brakes in the front, make this axle package what it is. Well, when you're gonna talk about differentials in a Jeep Wrangler or a Gladiator, you can't leave out Curry Enterprises. There isn't a name in the industry more synonymous with differential upgrades than Curry Enterprise themselves. And in this Jeep's case, we're using the Extreme 60 axle sets from Curry Enterprises. Now, you'll notice I didn't say Rock Jock. Well, that's because if you weren't already aware of it, they did change the company up a little bit and they, you know, the suspension aspect went one way and the differentials went the other way. So, all those uh, axles that we knew as Rock Jock 60s and 
44 and stuff like that are actually just Curry Enterprises now. So the Extreme 60 series you'll see is a little bit different than most of your axle manufacturers out there and what most of you know the Curry axles as. And that's this rotated differential here. You'll see that the, the diff cover is sitting at an angle and that's totally by design. You know, some people freak out a little bit when they're not familiar with Curry's and they see this for the first time, but that's actually to allow a lot more ground clearance and protect the differential itself. So as you can see, it's got this skid plate that goes underneath it like this, that bolts on, it can be changed out. And what that does is it allows you to, to just get up on those rocks and kind of slide over them. Now in the front axle and the rear axle, they did this. And by doing that, that makes them high pinion differentials. Again, offering a lot more ground clearance because it actually gives you about two inches more clearance in the rear axle. In the front axle, most people are used to high pinion anyway. So whatever, that's not too different. One thing that I really, really love about the, this axle and, and the way Curry sets it up, sets up most of their axles, is the, uh, the hydro assist tabs that are welded on here. They're done in such a way that we're literally just bolting in rams. A lot of axle manufacturers out there for some reason, this is a really hard thing for them to do. <laughs> but with Curry, it's always easy. We're just throwing the ram right on there and bolting it up. So, and, and they come with a pretty good chrome molly tie rod. So there's not a whole lot to upgrade on these things. Once we get them, they're pretty much done. The front comes with a really nice set of massive brakes. We'll get in there and show you those in a second. Now the rear, I think you're using the regular JL brakes in this case, so nothing too fancy there, but definitely the front got a brake upgrade. And if you're wondering about price, this set right here for the JL is gonna run you about 17 and a half. That's not the cheapest set of axles and that's not the most expensive set of axles, so we're middle of the road for these Jeeps. And it may sound like a lot, but you're getting a lot with them. Another great thing about these axles is that Curry on the Extreme Series axles, put a, a load bolt on there. And what a load bolt does is actually prevents ring gear deflection. So you're in those rocks, you're getting all torqued up and things start moving around a lot. What that does is, I mean, believe it or not, the back, your ring gear can actually start moving around. So what a load bolt does is come in from the backside, pushes up against it and prevents that from happening. By doing so, you're gonna prevent a lot of failures that can occur in the differential when you start getting really, uh, rowdy in the rocks. So. Another great option from Curry, and it's one that I don't see very often, unless it's like a, a nine or 10 inch third member out of a fabricated axle or any kind of nine inch style axle. Well, that wraps it up for the Currys. So let's go check out another set of great axle options for the Wrangler Gladiator. Well, here's a fun set of axles that we're fortunate enough to be installing right now. What's fun about them is that these are a set of Curry Dana 60 axles for JK, and they also make it for JL. What's unique about them is that they're Dana 60 center section, the, the ring and pinion is the Dana 60 size, but the outers, that's what's important. This is a semi-float axle. So we're gonna retain the five on five bolt pattern that is very familiar with the JKs and JLs and also JTs. But what's cool about that is that we're actually gonna retain all the, the brake hardware on the rear. So the backing plates, the rotors, the calipers, that stuff's gonna stay here and means we don't have to buy new wheels like you would if you went to a full float axle because the five on five is not big enough to fit the full float hubs. So on the rear, we're just gonna move the brake components over. On the front, we're gonna move over the steering knuckles, the unit bearings, the brake rotors and calipers also, but that's gonna save us a ton of money because this really heavy duty axle set is only gonna run about twelve and a half thousand dollars And really, the only thing that you're gonna to have to buy to make this work is drive shafts because with it being Dana 60, you are gonna to have to run at minimum a 1350 drive shaft, uh, which Curry is nice enough to build them with the yokes. So really, all we need to do is take measurements and order some drive shafts after the installation is done. Now, a lot of people out there are gonna hate on these axles and they think, why would you spend all that money? Because you're in the end, you just still only have a semi-float axle. Well, the truth is not everybody out there needs a full float axle. Semi-float is perfectly capable of handling pretty much, you know, especially in this configuration, they're very, very strong they can handle pretty much anything you're gonna throw at it off-road. Let me give you a good example of what that looks like. Here is a rear axle shaft from this. I mean, look at the size of that right there. That's a lot of radius. You see that guy right there? That's a lot of radius coming off of that axle shaft and transitioning into the axle flange itself. 
And that much meat right there on the bone is gonna keep that flange from bending unlike it would on a stock 30 or even 32 spline in the Rubicon variant. That radius right there on the stock axle shove is very, very, it's a lot smaller than this. And that's where you bend those axle shafts most of the time on the stock axles. But these are gonna be 35 spline uh, in this configuration, but to be honest with you, they come stock. Uh, we special ordered it 35 spline in this guys. But normally when you order them, you get a 40 spline locker in there. So the axle shaft down here would be even larger. This is a 35 spline axle shaft, much like you would find in your full float setups or like a one ton truck. So a lot of beef is packed into these axles for only twelve and a half thousand dollars and you don't have to buy another five grand in wheels and tires to make it work because let's face it if you're going to that much trouble you're probably going to run 40 or even 42 inch tires on those full flows so it's going to get really expensive once you start going down that rabbit hole and this will keep you from going down that rabbit hole the reason why this particular customer chose these axles is because well, we put a 392 Hemi in it. That's a lot of horsepower and torque to be thrown down at the uh, Dana 44 rear axle, ring and pinion, and that Dana 30 front. So now he has all the security in the world that he needs to go off-road, give it hell, and not have to worry about breaking anything, including the bank. Now, another axle option that I love to install, but we don't get a lot of opportunities to do it, are gonna be the nine inch style axles. And particularly in this video, what you're gonna see is the Curry F9 axle set. Now, we've installed these in a few Jeeps, uh, not as common as the others, but they are a favorite of mine. It's because they have such a low profile in the center. It's a very iconic looking axle in the off-road industry, and it actually, it actually has more strength than a Dana 60 and that has to do with the way the ring gear and the pinion gear actually interact with each other versus one of the other choices that you saw today. In the 9 inch or 10 inch center sections that are available in these types of axles, the pinion gear, the tooth is actually a little bit, well a lot longer than the others and it has to do with the way they're sitting in there and they're meshing together but because of the way they're set up like that, they actually are much stronger. I've heard numbers thrown out there by as much as 30% stronger than your regular Dana 60. So it's, a, it's an axle that just because it may have a smaller ring gear doesn't mean that it's necessarily weaker. It's again, it's the way they, that the, those two interact with each other that make it stronger. Also what's cool about it is you can carry multiple center section or third members around with you if, you, if you're baller like that. And if you had, had a problem with um, your ring opinion for some reason, then you could actually swap those out in no time. I mean, given the right circumstances, within a little bit of an hour, maybe you could have your center section replaced and back uh, hitting it on the trail. And that's another reason why it's kind of popular in the off-road racing world is because you can you can repair them and get them back in the game a lot faster. But that's not necessarily why we would be putting in them in Jeeps, but they are cool, they're iconic, they're beautiful looking, I, I think. They're one of the prettiest axles out there uh, when you see them bolted up underneath a rig. All right, we can't talk about crate axles for Jeeps without bringing up Dynatrack. This is a great American company located in Huntington Beach, California, and they build really awesome stuff. A little bit different from other, some of the other crate axles. And one of the first things about them that you're gonna notice is that front diff cover. It's a very heavy duty, knowledge, not modular iron diff cover. They're all gonna look the same. They're all gonna look like this, and that's really cool. It has that hammered paint look on it. it has Dynatrax logo right here in the middle. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that when you see it, you know exactly what's there. They do sell these diff covers for the regular uh, Jeep axles out there, so you can buy those. But don't be mistaken whenever you see them, get up there close and check out that axle and make sure it's a Dynatrack. But one of the things that makes Dynatrack unique and stands itself apart from all the other axles is the patent pending design of their center differential or close to center differential on their front axles and some of their rear axles as well. But definitely on the front axle, you'll notice it has this, sort of this notch right here. And for you guys that like to go rock crawling and you love getting as much ground clearance as you can, that's super important. And that's what makes them different from the other companies out there. That little bit of notch, small as it may seem, can be the difference between getting hung up on a rock and going right past them and moving on to the next obstacle on a trail. So that's what makes Dynatrack different. Some of the things that we'll look at on the axle, for the most part, I like everything on it. 
And this particular set of axles is what we call the Hardcore 60 package for the Jeep JK Wrangler. Now they run about $13,000 for the JKs. If you're looking at a similar crate axle setup for the JLs, expect to be in somewhere around the $17,500 range. But back to the JKs. On the JK Hardcore 60 package, the downfall I don't like about this axle is where the hydraulic steering ram mounts. And you'll see it, it actually mounts just below the tie rod. Now, this isn't the end of the world because if you, uh, if you have a good fabricator friend or you yourself are pretty good at it, you can actually buy a high steer kit that Evo Manufacturing makes that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to give you new arms for the steering knuckles so that you can raise this tie rod up and get it out of the way. Then it's going to move the ram mount and the track bar mount up. Well, actually, it doesn't move the track bar mount up, but it moves the ram mount up, gives it a nice skid to protect it, and it gives you a different track bar mount. So it doesn't really change the, the geometry of the track bar mounting, but in order to get that ram mount in there where you want it, you're going to have to cut that stuff off, so Evo gives you a new track bar mount. Dynatrek doesn't include a really heavy-duty, robust tie rod. They sell you one that I would like to say gets you by. You're going to want to replace that with something more heavy duty. And I believe companies like Yeti Steer Smarts, they make a tie rod for this axle, so you could replace it with one of those. We've actually manufactured some aluminum tie rods, 7075 tie rods for these. So there's options out there to immediately replace that. And believe me, if you're going to be out there, especially without doing a high steer kit on these, this thing's going to be hitting the rocks and kind of getting beat up and bent up almost as soon as you put it on. This kit here, uh, this guy is, has a DOM tie rod on it that we built years ago. It's holding up pretty well. And if this Jeep looks familiar, it's because we have done a build video on it in the past. If you want more information on it, check it out. The link is in the, in the uh, description of the video. But this guy, the reason he's here, actually these axles have been on here for about, I don't know, six or eight months. And you can see they've taken some abuse pretty well. He's actually beaten them up pretty well at some of the really hard granite rock parks here in Texas. And uh, we haven't had it back for any reason. Uh, the only reason it's here again is because we actually just took the old stock Pentastar V6 out that had an Edelbrock supercharger, took that out, whoo, took that out and we put a 392 Hemi in it now. So, and we also put the Evo double throwdown suspension on the front. So. There's not a whole lot left to do on this guy's Jeep except maybe taking the rear coilovers out and putting in the uh, Evo double throwdown, that cantilever design in the back. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot left that this guy can do to this Jeep. It's pretty badass. Okay, well that just about wraps it up for the Dynatrack axles for the JK. I didn't show you the rear, but it's a basic 60 rear full floater. Not a whole lot going on back there, but it is a, it is a really stout, really hardcore axle. Well, that wraps it up. For more videos on off-roading tech and just other bullshit, click here.